We got your meat. We got you covered. We got your beer. Revelry's got you covered. Right. A four-year block party coming uh, yeah. up this Sunday. If you're in Charleston, little oyster roast by Darling Oyster Bar. Right. Great oysters over there. Burgers Solid. by Pub Fair. Burgers by Pub I just actually just had my first Pub Fair uh, burger Ooh. last Friday. Strong to quite strong. Dank. Very good. They usually run out of burgers when they do pop-ups, which right. is... Impressive. A good yeah. telltale sign. Strong there. to quite strong that the burgers are well, good. Well, what you're there for is to sell them, and you right. sold them all. So right. that's good. So you pop down and get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Pop up, sell them out, pop down. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, for a great cause, Green Heart Project. Uh, look them up. They do great work. Uh, yeah, they're going to shut down the street, have a little block party. If you're in the Charleston area, head down to uh, old Conroy Street. It's going to be a good time. Always is on their uh, block parties. This Absolutely. one happens to be for a good cause and for their four years. Uh, in business, crushing business. They got so many gold medals. They're just yeah. proud to be drinking their beer on air. Right. Sure. Yeah, they just went to the U.S. or some beer championship, won gold twice, or no, one gold and a bronze. Almost got Brewery of the Year, but yeah. missed it by. Once they get a little more money, we'll, they'll build us a studio. Right. <laughs> uh, real quick, so we just talked about Rashad Penny. Uh, if you're on, if you're listening to this on YouTube, go check out that talk about would you basically trade Rashad Penny for a first-round pick. I misspoke. He did break his hand or his finger before he gained the 16 pounds. It's not 18. We inflated him even more than he was already. Inflated. You see, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> still, breaking your finger, you can still run. I mean, come on. You can still not eat a lot. <laughs> you never know. Like I said, maybe his wife was pregnant. Didn't want to make her feel that. bad. You don't want to fat shame these days. We're going to have to look into that. All right. Well, you got to learn to dance before you learn to crawl. Let's Cheers get to that. Popped it. <laughs> Let's get over to some uh, some Carlos Hyde. A big trade goes down. Carlos is shipped out. Of shipped out. Led to me playing Kyle Juszczyk this week. Right. That one hurt. Right. So uh, what do we make of this? I mean, there's a ton of different things to talk about here. Uh, I guess first let's talk about, you know, the impact this has for you, your value of Carlos Hyde, right? You got Carlos Hyde. What are you thinking? Um, I mean, I think immediately over the next week or three, you, I think you'll be probably okay uh, but long term for the rest of this season i i guess that's not necessarily long term but for the rest of the right. season you just don't know what you're going to get maybe when leonard comes back you see maybe a 60 40 carlos to leonard and then the next week maybe it's 60 40 leonard to carlos and then it starts fading out more like 80 20 and you know i think if leonard's healthy yeah i don't think there's much of a chance once he's they see him full go that there's you're going to see too, too much Carlos. Great move by the Jaguars overall. We'll get Absolutely. to that uh, in a second. I mean, I don't, I don't, do you guys see it any other way? I mean, I'm I'm a Carlos owner. Like I said, that, that trade really killed me this week. I, I think you can probably play him this week. This is what the Jaguars are looking to do on yep. the rock. Well, as a Carlos owner myself in one league, I was, uh, you know, we're riding high three, two or three weeks ago when, man, you know, the switch was made and, and um, the the – 80 yards and a touchdown 100 yards and two touchdowns i mean you know it was back-to-back -back big games out of carlos and and then obviously they run into baltimore's defense and that didn't go so well and you're like all right i can get over i can get a, you know get by with that and you know they got beat up by the chargers so that wasn't a whole lot of opportunities for carlos to be getting in some of those games right yeah yeah exactly well they just they weren't they weren't close games where they could continue pounding it with Carlos like the, they had been. Yeah, the Browns games in general have been so up and down. It's almost like two or three. You and know, should be expected with a rookie quarterback and a team that's not used to being anywhere near winning. Yeah, I, that's exactly they 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 haven't been anywhere near winning in forever, and they get you know, they got to get got a victory this year and broke that curse. But it's just you know thing a month ago things were great for Carlos owners, and then we kind of was going south and then all the you know then the head coach comes out and says hey we're going to give show more work and it didn't happen it was carlos but it really wasn't doing anything because again like you said they got beat up by the chargers and just got knocked out then he goes over to jacksonville so you got there's a little bit of light at the short-term tunnel like you said I, I we don't know there's some talk that maybe you know the the some people want to sit on one side of the room and say all right well they brought in carlos because they know leonard fournette's really hurt and they you know could potentially go on ir and all that stuff i mean at they this point put him on you IR have, it has to be a thought in the back of your mind but like 
like you just said, Jay Wayne, they ha- hasn't happened, and I would Im- imagine that if they were going to, they would have. I think for the whole thing, obviously the Jags are playing NFL football, and they're only one game out of their conference, I mean out of their division right now, and they don't care about our fantasy team. So I'm with you, Casey. I think when Leonard Fournette's healthy, this is, I think, if when he gets back, if he gets back anytime soon, I think it's going to be the Leonard Fournette show again. In I think meantime, you'll have a two or three a, week window where you're still getting a decent amount of hide while Fournette's back just to ease him back in. I don't think it's going to go 100%. Well, in the meantime, it's a great move for the Jags, like you said. Unfortunately, this week they go against Philadelphia, and they got a great front, so not the easiest team to run on. But then they got a decent couple of, you know, got to give. De- they got Indianapolis the next week, which is, you know, the Colts are still the Colts. They and have a bye. Uh, no, Pittsburgh, Buffalo. Um, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bu- the bye. Yeah, after Philly, the bye. <laughs> yeah. And then week ten to go to the Colts. My bad. So they got Eagles bye. So not the best thing, but you know. It's so it's it's it, the the philosophy of the team is yeah. there. It's a ground they want to run it. Right. And we got and, and I'm about to put you on spot well, here. For, we won't to go talk quite about there the, yet. Okay. Well, when you talk about the Jags and what they want to do, yeah, there's a reason why they brought in Carlos. Right. Hyde. And, and I mean, I, I guess I'm looking at it as, you know, yeah, maybe they did bring in Carlos because Leonard is is a little more hurt than than they wanted to lead on. But I think it's a good move in their part because a. Carlos is a semi high. I think he's, I don't know if he's sixth or seventh highest paid back in the league yep. right now. Uh, you're going to assume half of that contract for the next year, and then you can do whatever dump, you want. You can dump him next year if you want to with basically no penalty, or you could hang on to him, pay him a little more than you should be paying a backup, um, and have a good backup that you know you can lean on so and, and hand it to him again. 20 times a game. Uh, so I don't think, I think it was a great move in general, just talking about what the Jaguars kind of were doing with the move and, and kind of where it could end up. I mean, it definitely hurts some some TJ Yeldon stock probably for the rest of your season. He's not going to be super startable unless you're in a pinch. Um, you will be a zero hit against right. the cap to cut Carlos right. next year. That's what I'm saying. So I think it's a win-win for them uh, financially. I, I don't know if they... I'm pretty sure. I don't know what their cap situation is, but I think they're kind of on the higher end of cap strap. So I don't think they would be hanging on to Carlos, but... Uh, it's a great move for them. I mean, let's say Fournette after the buy, you could be all the way up to week fifteen, week fourteen, where Carlos is very usable. Yeah, I mean, in that's fantasy, what and, and but for the Jaguars, it could be they don't like you said they don't give a shit about your fantasy team. So I think it's a good move for them. They they obviously have Yeldon in there, who's isn't necessarily fantasy wise. He's well showing up for you, but he's not doing what the Jaguars need their running back to do, and what they took Leonard Fournette to do with this right, team. Right, right, yeah. Ta- it, he's not, he's not Fournette. I mean, he's he's good in space, good at catching the ball, and but he's not Leonard Fournette. And so, if you're a Carlos Hyde owner, unfortunately, as a Carlos Hyde owner, you're really, really hoping that Leonard Fournette stays out. Right, that's really what you're looking for, um, and hoping that Carlos goes. They cut him, and he goes somewhere else next year. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, on absolutely. the long term situation. Uh, absolutely. Because you definitely don't want him to just be the backup for Leonard Fournette getting, you know, well, 20 or 30% of the run. This is how quickly things change in fantasy football. And especially with, you know, you got a running back that was on fire for and in a really good situation a couple of weeks ago. And now you don't. Like, uh, 20, you know, nine, 98 yards and two touchdowns. And the Browns are like, hey, we got a quarterback now. Look at what, look, watch us roll. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, man, if I really wish I could get back to that, you know, close to that late first round pick I could have got a month ago. Yeah. You know, I've seen some people on Twitter being like, hey, I think it was Jeff, Rob, Robert, Robbie Jeffries was tweeted out a month ago and he's, uh, you know, hey, you should be selling your Carlos side. It's like, well, we a month ago we were like, you could you you should sell your Carlos side or you should borrow buy your Carlos side depending on what position you're mm-hmm. in, you know. And it's just like, it's if you could find a couple of weeks here where there's no Leonard Fournette and the value goes back up on Carlos side, I got no problem cashing out. I'm not. I see. I'm I'm not cashing out on. I'm just gonna ride him out for the rest of the year and let him go somewhere else. Most likely. I mean, I don't I don't see the Jaguars holding on and paying him. A decent amount of money what next year would cost them um running back wise when they could probably just draft another running back in the third round or whatever and you know yeah but i understand what you're saying there i feel like a third rounder might be more valuable than what even if they're cash strapped even even when you quote unquote say a highly paid running back they're really not getting paid that much compared to pretty much everybody but i mean but but for the rest of the position to, to you already have one guy you spent a first round draft pick on and you know you can spend that money elsewhere rather than tying up 
you know, five million, five, almost five, four point. Yeah, I see. But, Carlos Hyde. but but let's but the reason they brought in Carlos Hyde still plays next year because sure, sure, Fournette, sure. And Fournette has not been the beacon but of I th- health. I think this just happened and, to be the perfect storm for them, where you can pay Carlos two and a half million for the rest of the year, and then you can let him go with almost no penalty next year. And you still have a chance to win the and division. You still have a chance to do what you're doing, and you can get your all star running back healthy. It doesn't matter how long it takes now. Yeah. Um, so I, th- I think that's a win-win for them, and I don't really see any reason why they would hang on to him. You know, obviously you could say, well, Leonard Fournette might may or not, but I think you could spend a draft pick or pick somebody up a free agent and pay him a fraction of what you're paying uh, Carlos Hyde, and it's a dollar and cents league at the end of the day. And, oh yeah, you're right. And uh, so I'd, I'd be holding my Carlos and hoping that he goes somewhere else. I'm not going to sell him for pennies on the dollar because he went somewhere else. His value got a little hurt. But when you tell us why the, the Jags picked up Carlos Hyde and why they really need Carlos Hyde right now to do the things what they want want Leonard Fournette to be doing for their team, right. that's why I'm like, it w- wouldn't surprise me at all if, they, if he does well for sure. them to roll him back and just have two good power backs next year on the roster. To obviously, quarterback move, you know, to be determined mm-hmm. whether or not Blake Bortles is a quarterback or not. We're in a situation right now as a Jacksonville Jaguars team that your foundation of your offensive philosophy is not playing. Yeah. And now your team's in turmoil. Well, before we move to the next step, Jay Wynn, you got anything on on Carlos here? Only, well, it'd be a $16 million dead cap hit if they cut Bortles in 19. So that's kind of a bummer for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, my initial reaction was this is kind of a bummer for Carlos Hyde's long term outlook of this season, right? But that just depends on whether Fournette comes back or not. They haven't put him on IR yet. I could see them putting him in IR. I could see them seeing how these next these rest of these games go and seeing if he can come back after the bye. I don't. I don't necessarily. I mean, that's know. also. I guess that's a possibility that we didn't kind of. If they maybe they lose another two or three games before they think Fournette's healthy and hide, they just run hide the rest of the season and say, hey, we're not going to play Fournette. True. Well, they're right. this far into the season and they're still as bad as, it, you know, week two, they were the best team in the world. And now, because they beat the Patriots, mm-hmm. and now they're like, you know, what, they're fighting in the three locker and, room. Three and four? They're fighting in the locker room. Right, they were three and one and now mm-hmm. they're three and four. Nobody wanted to see the Jaguars. Exactly. We were nobody like, oh, they're not going to, to Kansas play. City. This yeah. is about to be a fire matchup. Right, up, nobody wanted to play them. And but and now they are, you know, fighting in the locker room, but only one game because of that AFC South is so crazy. Right. They're only one game out of the division. Right. Which is I mean, but they have they dropped they Campbell dropped with two the, big ones to quote, the Titans and the Texans in the last two weeks, which aren't isn't good. True. Um, but he is 28 years old, so he's he's going to be 29. He's going to be 29 next year, right? Sure. Which is you start you start losing value as a running back, no matter who you are at that age, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, maybe you go see what the Fournette owner would, might pay you for Carlos Hyde right now, because he's probably I don't think like going to be enough. No, no. It's well, probably I mean, not may, well, it could be maybe, depending on maybe the, their if team. A, maybe if he's in a dog fight and if, trying to stay alive, stay afloat, and Fournette's he, been the guy who's been this linchpin of not being able to sust, you know sustain but, running back points. Sure, maybe. Would you, you know, move so, him for a two? No, hell no. No, I wouldn't want to. You got to give me at least a one for me to give you Carlos Hyde. I don't think you get because a one. I think next year there, he's going to be very, very startable wherever he ends up and he'll probably be startable there's a chance he'll be startable for the rest of the season this right. week, this year and those he'll probably get three or four uh more weeks of a of a window here for some decent run if you're a four net owner do you give up a first to go get carlos i mean i wouldn't but no i, do. I would i would See, give that's up a, the beauty of this game would you give up a two casey's to go not get selling him for a one and he wouldn't give up a one for him that's exactly I'm just why not gonna, like i don't i don't well he might sell I feel him like for a you're one. just mortgaging a lot to, mm-hmm. to, I mean, but at the end of the day, like Carlos could help you next season. So uh, it's not a terrible move if you think that bringing in Carlos, keeping your team afloat with that other run with the points that Carlos is going to give you is going to get you into the playoffs. Then and when Fournette comes back, you think you have a chance of just beating people up. Then sure. I mean, I guess I, I'll, I'll give up a one basically all day to chase a chip if I think that's what's now I will. I will say that i can see yes if you got if you're if you're contending and you can like not contending but like basically if you're on pace for the playoffs right now and you got leonard fournette on the on the bench i could see giving up a garrett like basically your things would have to go absolutely sour in a hurry outside of your leonard fournette unhealthiness to miss the playoffs because i wouldn't want to give up like a you know top six first rounder but like yes if you can 
get a get a uh, insurance policy on your Leonard Fournette piece, and then either next year, you know, you, you probably s- have you, a playable you, at least RB two. Next year, you either have a a, a a you still have an insurance policy. As a worst case scenario, he stays on the Jags, and your Leonard Fournette is backed up mm-hmm. with a very the best backup in the league, or Carlos Hyde goes somewhere else, and Outside you got to carry on Johnson. Right, and now you got yeah, and now you got two starting running backs. You know what? Until one yeah. of them does something, you know, gets hurt or whatever. Yeah. So I can see that, but I I wouldn't be wanting to if I'm if I'm if Leonard Fournette is the reason my team is two and five, I'm sure as hell not going to give up a first and sure. miss the playoffs and have Carlos Hyde on my team and not have my pick one four. Or whatever it is yeah. in rookie season. Hundred percent. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing, I mean, and maybe this isn't the direction you want to take this conversation here, but to me, with this Carlos Hyde trade, the biggest takeaway for me is that I would go buy Leonard Fournette. No, I don't have a problem with 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 there because I think that could jettison into the latter part of this conversation here. But I, I agree with you hundred percent. I I would I'm. I mean, I've been trying I'm sending to get out Leonard offers Fournette. For, I've been for sending out offers, and now I just feel like this is even more. Sure, I I got no problem hit. trying to get Fournette. Like I've if I'll send over the first in a hurry just to try to get things started on seeing if the, the Fournette owner will come off of them. I, I would, yeah, all day. Uh, this is. That's, I don't think that's going to do it. I don't but think. It, but I, uh, I'd give up a one and a two. Perpetuate the conversation. I throw in a player. I think a one and a two is a, a decent start at this point. Obviously, a one would have never got you a conversation with Leonard Fournette a month, six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, you know, things get a little wild and crazy. And some people, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mover and a shaker and I like to make deals, but I'm not going to sell low on my high dollar asset mm-hmm. while he's hurt. Yeah, That's not, but some people would. Exactly. That's not how I roll. Some people are ready to trade the same thing you paid for Rashad Penny for Rashad Penny. But that's so, not selling low. I, well, I mean, but it's not... If you if you're getting a first back for Leonard Fournette, is it really selling low? Where he was, Rashad Penny was never a first, a late end of the first, mid second, or a startup pick. Look, you just sure. pick, you just took sure you, Rashad Penny was fair it, enough. It's not even close to what Leonard Fournette was, six, you know, start in draft season. Yeah, you're fair, fair enough. Could be he was. I mean, Penny was in that like fourth round there for a while. Yeah, but that's it. Sure. It takes two yeah, first I know, rounders. I know, I know. I got to you, go I got from you. the fourth round to the first round. You're it right. takes a you're lot, right. a lot of cap, a lot of equity. You right, dog, to get up right. there. You right. <laughs> I think that's a fair point, though. I'm definitely chasing some Leonard Fournette and seeing what somebody wants to sell him for if they're ready to unload him because they're just sad he hasn't played a lot and. They could be sad he doesn't play. He's there's injury some, there's, prone. There's, there's a ton of, of hate out there. Hate out there for he can't him. catch the ball. He can like, catch the ball just fine. Now let's no, that's go. The hate. Let's, let's quick. Look, right. That is, that's the hate. There's, let's quickly go through something that we touched on a few months, a few weeks ago, when we were talking about buying somebody, like uh, 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 somebody that's not, well, I think might have been the Dalvin Cook talk or something like that. When we were talking about we, we, to talk about maybe chasing down the cheap Leonard Fournette right now. If you're chasing the, if you're on the heels of making the playoffs. And you have basically, like Casey said, right, we're, with, ta- exactly. we're talking Rashad, Rashad Penny. Penny. Exactly, like Casey can't give up his first rounder next year to buy Rashad Penny in the league where I own him because he's chasing the playoffs, has a chance to make the playoffs, and Rashad Penny might not help him for the next month or six weeks. You got if you're going to buy Leonard Fournette right now, you need to understand that you might not be buying somebody that's going to help you win in the next six weeks. Right. So your purchase power, whatever you're giving away, whatever you either, you're trading, is is something that you could be giving away to help you win now. Yeah, you either so, need to be big dick in the whole league exactly. and be like, I can I can afford to make a move and have him sit on my bench because my I'm I'm just crushing. Yeah. Or you probably are on the other end of the spectrum exactly. and are if, trying to make moves you, to get you, better rebuilding. You could have a really good reloading. team. You could have a really good team. And for instance, the guy who's a Rashad Penny question it was, he had Mixon and, and, and Dalvin Cook. So those and both multiple of those, other startable. Well, I, yeah, but but I'm but guys that were hurt yeah, recently, right, so right. It gives you the L's. You still got a really good solid da- dynasty asset, but your team's two and five. So you could have a good team be two and five and be like nowhere. If, you know, you got to look at that playoff picture. If 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 you're some playoff, some leagues have that last spot for the playoffs is going to be a bad team just because the top three beat everybody up. You know that, so it depends on your league whether or not you actually have a chance for the playoffs. But if you're out of it and you can give up something, some aging veterans or whatever, sure. or you know, and you're trying to get after, I don't. There's not a Leonard Fournette coming out of college football this year. You know, obviously he's been hurt, and you can call him injury prone if you want to. But when Leonard Fournette's running, you sure want him on your roster. Yeah, you want him on your fantasy team. So if you can go get Leonard Fournette now, I I don't mind it. But understand what you're giving up in and the position you're going to be in when for the rest of this season, you might not be getting anything out of him. Yeah, no, so I, I think just to throw that out there 
hundred percent. I think that's that's accurate all the way. Um, I guess to finish the conversation, let's just talk about the f- kind of the football side of this thing, and you know, just I don't know. I, we we talk about it a lot off air, and <clears throat> and just talking about what Leonard Fournette means to this team and why they went out and traded for Carlos Hyde. Just from an X's and O's standpoint, like this team is clearly built behind a player that they drafted highly, which some people agree with and some people don't agree with in Leonard Fournette and the defense and the defense, which that, and that player and the defense went to the coincide. AFC championship right. game. We're up 10 points on the Patriots for making the Super Bowl last year. Right. And Leonard Fournette up through all the hate last year of saying everything about terrible things about Leonard Fournette. When they got in that playoff game with the Steelers and Leonard Fournette ran all <laughs> over them boys. <laughs> yes, sir. Got his ankle hurt and came back in and ran all over him some more. Yep. Nobody said a word nope. in those weeks about why you drafted Leonard Fournette and how replaceable the running back didn't was. Didn't hear about it. Didn't didn't hear about anything. Carried him. So should have I mean, won that game. Should have. They, they no, did they, win no, that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beat next just, game. Well, well all right. Because the, the way the, the Ben Roethlisberger halftime bomb and sure. then the bomb. They came air, back. They should have won it twice. Right. And But, you know, that they had that game and then the Steelers were making magic happen. And right. Leonard Fournette was taking them back down the field and winning it all over again. They should have beat the Patriots is what I was trying right. to say. They absolutely should have. And, and I mean, you can show me whatever you want to show me stats wise, analytically, any anything of that nature of, well, here's the splits with TJ Yeldon in there and this is their yards per offensive game and this is they've won and done all this other things. Well, right now, TJ Yeldon is your starting running back and you ain't winning games. And you're fighting in the Y'all locker boys room. You're fighting in the locker room. Your defense is in disarray. I don't think too much has changed. Oh, but Blake they were one fumbled. Of the, it, it, it's Blake's right. fault. It's, I mean, it, it, it is somewhat Blake's fault, but because it's a running back. But there. it's also Blake's fault because your team isn't doing what your team is supposed to be doing right now because you're supposed to be able to be putting eight, nine guys in the box that worried about what Leonard Fournette is doing and then coming out there and then letting Blake saying, hey, we're going to make Blake Bortles beat us. And Blake Bortles has been able to beat you when it's one on one and it's confident Blake out there right now. It's non-confident Blake out there. And they're, they're saying there isn't a team in this league who's lining up against the Jacksonville Jaguars and watching film and studying and going, hey, Bo, them boys are starting uh, Yeldon this week. It's going to be a tough one. What are we, we going to do? What are we going to do? How do we stop him? How do we stop that guy? Chin no. strap. Better the, get Them boys are like, straight. hey, we'll let Yeldon do whatever Yeldon's going to do, and we'll make Blake Bortles uh, beat, us through the air. beat us through the air. And that's you know kind of what their thing is with Leonard Fournette as well. Obviously, you're stacking the box, so you're saying, hey, let Blake beat us, but you're also getting the one-on-ones with yeah, Blake Bortles when there's eight guys in the box. So it's a lot easier for Blake to beat you. The defensive respect gives you that right. Blake Bortles play action, boot out, right. and now he hits somebody in a crosser that's easy, right. and, or he can run with it. Right he can now, do multiple things. Can he, can play, he can throw a pass in one-on-one coverage when it's exactly when there he's is no, confident and the defense is playing well, and he knows he's good to go, and he can hand it to Leonard. And everything right now against the Jags defensively is soft zone. Because right. they don't have to do anything. They don't have to watch out for anybody. Right. So They're that's not, the problem. Right. Exactly. I mean, again, stats lie, and I hate pointing at stats, and I hate doing all that. And you know, you can say, "Well, this team Numbers is better." Numbers don't lie, though. This is a wasted draft pick for taking Fournette, and blah 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 blah. And look at what they do when Yeldon's in the game. Well, it's a lot different when Yeldon comes in and plays a game, and Leonard Fournette's coming back the next week. It's it's different when Yeldon's your starting back for the next couple of weeks, and you've been in there and see what they're doing with right. Yeldon week in week out. I mean, you just see what they're doing with Yeldon, and then you, right. like I like what you said earlier about it is is after two or three weeks of no no Leonard Fournette, now the things are not working like they used to for for um, the quarterback Bortles, and now it's, you got right. non confident Bortles, right? Instead of one week, well, without what's wrong Leonard, with Blake Bortles? Well, he's the Blake Bortles that you used to know and and hate or love, Leonard however Fournette. you want to get right. And That's garbage non-Leonard. time. Blake has still been good for fantasy, just like T.J. Yeldon has been good for your fantasy team, but he hasn't been. They're not nec- winning games. They're not winning games, and he hasn't been necessarily crushing it rushing. Yeah. Um. I mean, he's got some decent averages here, but he's got some bad averages there. And and when you're not competitive in the game, you got to get away from the running game a little bit. And they've been able to keep the running game close. And I mean, I'm not a stats do lie, but when you want to look at the overall of what happened last year, and these are obviously through 16 games last year. Um, but in 2008, 18 or 2018, they're 20th in attempts. The Jaguars, they're 21st in total yards. They're 23rd, 23rd and average yards per game. They're dead last in touchdowns in 2017. First in yards, first in attempts, ninth in average, uh, per play. So like the 4.3 or what, you know, whatever yeah. tied for second in touchdowns, 
first in yards per game rushing. Like so that's night and day of night what they day. were doing. So you can point to Leonard Fournette and it's three point seven yards a carry and and however you want to chop it up, man. But and and when you're actually playing the game, it matters. It who's, matters. Who's the guy back there? And you can say, oh, all these talent, the running backs replaceable, and this guy's replaceable, and that guy's replaceable. I guess the quarterback's replaceable because the the Eagles won the Super Bowl with a backup. Exactly. Like, so and you no, got you yeah. got to have a good team, and you have to have a good plan, and you have to have a you have to have and good players. Beat Case at, Keenum to get there, right? You have to have good players at every position. Like your offensive and defensive lines have to be good, and you have to have good wide receivers, and you have to have good running backs like scheme a, a, everything needs to be working together and when it's not things aren't going well you're fighting in the locker room jalen ramsey was running his mouth now he doesn't have shit to say right like and it all works together right. like your spirit if you when leonard fournette's not there and the quarterback's turning the ball over now all of a sudden the defense is, is a nasty now all of a right. sudden you're getting beat up by the dallas cowboys which never happens but you, get, you know Cole beasley's just Working, you working, y'all boys. Because you Dak Prescott's beating you on RPOs. They're running a high school offense. Out all there. of that works together. You got your quarterback and your running back and your defense. That's your team. Quarterback hands it to the running back. He gets first downs. We're nasty. Breaks off big runs. He runs over people. The defense is high. Keelan Cole singled up. He can run faster than right. your guy. I'm gonna throw a bomb to him. Blake's bombs have been awesome De- recently De- when he's confident. When the defense is hyped up, there's not a better defense in the league. Right. But right now the defense is like, well, we know when we go on the field, something's going to bad. It's going to happen because Bortles going to turn it over. We can't hand it to Leonard Fournette. So again, all this wraps into great move for the for the Jacksonville Jaguars to bring in Carlos Hyde to back up the injured Leonard Fournette because yes, he is injured, and there's you know it's another it's a soft tissue injury, and last year it was an ankle and this and that, and I said it last year. I don't think that he's somebody that big shouldn't be able to move like he does, and his ankle went out on him. But like Casey said, he came back into playoffs gutted it out after halftime and drug them to that victory over the Steelers. And then they were up 10 in the fourth quarter against the uh, Patriots. And if they go to the Super Bowl, we're not even having this conversation, you know, just because he just, just getting into just playing in the last game, right. Gets you on a whole nother level, even if you don't win. And so, yeah. and now you got unconfident Bortles out there right. on a short leash, gets so, benched. I mean, I'm, th- I'm sure you can dredge up stats and put things in my face and say, here, no, see, look at this. Hey, look at this. Hey, no, look at this. No, see, I'm right because this guy matters and running backs don't matter. And it's like, not like you can put whatever you want in my face, but right now the Jacksonville Jaguars are broken. And the first thing I'm pointing to is that Leonard Fournette ain't there. Yeah, right. Right. And they're falling apart at the seams because nobody's worried about the run game right now from the if Jacksonville Jaguars. If it's not too late to save the just got benched Blake Bortles with a power running game, the Jacksonville Jaguars rolled the dice to see. Right. They did what they had to do, and they only gave up a fifth-round pick to bring in Carlos Hyde, and obviously everything can be a little wompy when you bring in sure. somebody midseason. And we're going to talk but about they're it only Mark one Cooper. week away from a bye week, exactly the Mark Cooper thing. They're only one way, one week away from the bye week. Um, you know, so we but, don't know what's going to happen. And you, if, if everybody's replaceable, if running backs are replaceable, just draft one in the third or fourth round. Look at Alva Kamara. Look at look at Kareem Hunt. Like they didn't boys just obviously they didn't give up too much to get a running back. Yeah, but, but look, they well, they but, did trade all both of those teams traded up sh- future picks to get those. Guys. Sure. But again, that's a point in my favor, I think. Mm-hmm. But like you went and got a guy who you know you can hand it to 20 times and on that 20th carry he's better than he was on the first carry you know you don't have that guy in tj yeldon right like tj yeldon is doesn't get better as and, and I'm, goes I'm, on. that's nothing it's not i think tj yeldon's a good player he doesn't like, wear down the defense but he's not a between no. the tackle, scared to tackle him. and we know that and if we, i know that the coach on the other side knows that <laughs> like it's just and and tj yeldon's gonna go somewhere and probably flourish as a as a kind of satellite back and and checking in for somebody hell if he went to the San Francisco 49ers he'd have a great year yeah he's having a good year uh p- fantasy points wise when he plays it's just not what the Jaguars are trying to do like and it's not how they're built and it's not what they're doing like everything's relevant like right. just to say because this position's replaceable and that you're upset about it, they drafted a like come on man like you can argue whatever you want and, and yeah Looking back in hindsight, it's 2020 every time. After the Jaguars got smashed by the Cowboys, I didn't hear a single person say, well, the Cowboys should have taken Jalen Ramsey. I don't know why they took Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> yeah. Like, crazy how that... There wasn't a, I didn't see a peep of that on Twitter anywhere. Like, all of a sudden, the Cowboys have a decent secondary. Jalen Ramsey's not the problem of them not having him on the team. Like, yeah. it's just... It's crazy how those things work. The biggest problem the Jacksonville Jaguars have right now is they're going to London in disarray... And they got to go play the Eagles. 
who just got smoked in the fourth quarter. Right. And maybe Carlos all, won't be the answer in this game because that's he what just I'm got saying. there and they're yeah, on London. Yeah. And, yeah. How could he be right. the answer in this game? You just got here a couple days ago. Now you're flying to London. You have no time to talk about it, plan it out, get in the, get. There's no real practice going on this week because you got to spend a whole day going to London. And now, and you got to play against the Eagles team who was shutting out the Panthers in the fourth quarter and then got it snatched from them. So they're about as pissed off as they can be. And they know that they are what, a solid what, unit. What do you call it? What? What did you, you, you mad, at, mad as a... Mad as a hornet. Mad as, <laughs> mad off. You step mad on as that. a hornet. If you've, if you've never been chased by hornets that come out of the ground, those ground hornets, they <laughs> are mad. angry. They are mad. They're angry. There's a what reason. You stepping on my ground. The, the older I get in this little world, I figure out those sayings. They come. They, the boys made that up hundreds of years ago. They somebody wouldn't have figured, made them up if they weren't exactly. for real. Exactly. Mad as a hornet is a real thing because if you accidentally <laughs> stir up those ground hornets, you can be upset. Your you grandpa did. used to say some shit like that for sure. sure. Absolutely did. So it's unfortunate that Carlos Hyde's first game in midweek showing up Gets to go over there. No, he, he what it was last week though. He, he last play. Thursday. Okay, okay, my bad. He's, He's got, got a week. week. He's got a week. But still, a dysfunctional team flies to London playing against a team that's you know returning champs, and they're not anywhere close to dysfunctional. And you know that's the kind of game where usually the best coaching staff wins. Sure, but I think you're going to see a steady dose of Carlos, and maybe he has 136 yards, or maybe he has 60. <laughs> but. You're going to get a steady dose of Carlos. You're going to see some Carlos. Maybe you'll see some Cody Kessler, too. At least they're not like playing in Philadelphia. They got all, everybody has to go to, to this London. Is, this so is true. And, this. and you know, the Jaguars love some London. At least no, that's true. That's Close, true. Almost a home game. Just withdrew his uh, 300 million on Wembley Stadium, though, or whatever. So he had it was. better pl- place, places for that capital. Yeah. <laughs> like some more mustache, pu- mustache, mustache. pomade. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, we mustache to a break. Uh, I think that. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Mustache. He made that shit up. Mustache? Mustache? Mustache. Mustache. Like a run? Like a run yeah. to a break? You never heard that? I didn't make that up. Yeah. We're that, dashing. That was a stashing. Yeah. It was a slow you know da- Dasher and Dancer and Prancer? Don't go there. And Rudolph and Vixen. Anyway, I, I think Uh-oh. overall, I think this is a great midseason move by the Jaguars to go acquire Carlos Hyde. Much like it's great by us to have a midseason meet. Like, exactly. That was a, you took the words right out of my mouth. Give me the Jason. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So for those of you that are on YouTube, you you heard that little clip there, but we're playing meatloaf music uh, on the intro and the outro. You won't hear that on YouTube due to copyright uh, infringements. <laughs> He's a huge fantasy football guy, or at least he used to be, which is why we do an ode to meatloaf every year. Right. He's uh, he's just crushed all the celebrity uh, fantasy football uh, leagues. They won't Boys even won't let, let him, let him in. in. <laughs> and he's he's very adamant about how he's the best. He just goes out there and he tells was on, everyone. He was on the zero QB before anybody was on the zero QB. Right. <laughs> right. You know, if you, if you have two QBs on your team, you're not a threat. <laughs> that's, uh, a, that's a direct meatloaf quote. That's a quote. That's a quote. Um, so we love him because he's not only awesome with the fantasy football, but I mean, he's just the, all his music. Well, the first two albums were just fantastic. Amazing. Crushed uh, some acting career. Fight Club. Well, so here's a fun fact. He was in the original production of Hair, mm. uh, but he declined to be in the nude scene. He said that, uh, quote, you get an extra 1250 to be in the nude scene, and I didn't need an extra 1250. <laughs> skinny! Yeah. He's <laughs> got skinny meat. <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's, let's go out to a break, and I uh, hope you enjoy the meat. Why wouldn't you? We'll be back with more Married to the Game.